Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, and at the hour of our death, amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to your word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. And the word was made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to Daily Mass at St. Michael's in Bedford, Texas on this Thursday of the 11th week in Ordinary Time. Please stand. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. Under the shadow of your throne, your saints have dwelt secure. Sufficient is your arm alone, and our defense is sure. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. Good morning. Today's Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Ben Black. We especially pray may Almighty God bless the soul of Ben Black and grant eternal rest. Let's also remember Ben Black's family in our prayers. May God continue to bless them too. Dear friends, as we have come around this altar of the Lord to thank and praise for all the blessings that he has bestowed on us, let us acknowledge our own sins and shortcomings and ask God's pardon and forgiveness that we may worthily participate in this Holy Eucharist. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, bless Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, 
that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. Like a fire, there appeared the prophet Elijah, whose words were as a flaming furnace. Their staff of bread he shattered. In his zeal, he reduced them to straits. By the Lord's word, he shut up the heavens and three times brought down fire. How awesome are you, Elijah, in your wondrous deeds, whose glory is equal to yours. You brought a dead man back to life from the netherworld by the will of the Lord. You sent kings down to destruction and easily broke their power into pieces. You brought down nobles from their beds of sickness you heard threats at Sinai, at Horeb, avenging judgments. You anointed kings who should inflict vengeance and a prophet as your successor. You were taken aloft in a whirlwind of fire, in a chariot with fiery horses. You were destined, it is written, in time to come to put an end to wrath before the day of the Lord, to turn back the hearts of fathers toward their sons, and to reestablish the tribes of Jacob. Blessed is he who shall have seen you and who falls asleep in your friendship. For we live only in our life, but after death our name will not be such. O oh, Elijah, enveloped in the whirlwind. Then Elisha, filled with the twofold portion of his spirit, <clears throat> wrought many marvels by his mere word. During his lifetime, he feared no one, nor was any man able to intimidate his will. Nothing was beyond his power. Beneath him, flesh was brought back to life. In life, he performed wonders, and after death, marvelous deeds. The word of the Lord. A response. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. The Lord is king. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Justice and judgment are the foundation of his throne. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. Fire goes before him and consumes his foes round about. His lightnings illumine the world. The earth sees and trembles. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord all of the earth. The heavens proclaim his justice, and all peoples see his glory. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. All who worship graven things are put to shame, who glory in the things of naught, all gods are prostrate before him. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. <clears throat> Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. have 
received a spirit of adoption as sons, through which we cry, Abba, Father. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, in praying, do not babble like the pagans who think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. Your father knows what you need before you ask him. This is how you are to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give up this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. If you forgive others their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your transgressions. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, dear friends, I uh, just remembered we have a, what's your name? Yeah. Grace? Rayson. Yeah, we have Rayson with us who is going to receive the first Holy Communion. I just remember when I saw the family together. So let's specially pray for Rayson. May God be permanently resting in him through the form of this Holy Communion, and may deepen his faith that he may be a very good person in the future. And let us also pray for that family who brought him to this sacred place. Well, dear friends, the theme of prayer is being continued in the Gospel of today, that Jesus teaches his disciples the prayer, the universal prayer of Father. But your brothers and sisters, the, the disciples saw Jesus, that he was speaking very many times about this prayer, and they also personally witnessed that Jesus goes for praying in the middle of the night and then the early morning and spending a lot of time in praying very earnestly and deeply. So all these, in a way, motivated them also to pray, but then they do not really know what to pray and how to pray. And that interest, that earnest, moves them to ask Jesus to teach them how to pray. And Jesus teaches this wonderful prayer to that disciples. My dear brothers and sisters, we need to remember this prayer is most powerful one because God's Son himself framed those words, what we need to include and what we need to avoid. And therefore, it has a lot of value, and there are so many instances that we can say the people who benefited from this prayer by residing faithfully in themselves. One incident I can give is that Samuel Morse, the one who invented electrical telegraph, you know, when he was interviewed, the interviewing person asked Morse, Mr. Morse, have you ever had any kind of confusion in your life as to what to do next? And he said, yes, I had not once, but so many times. But then the reporter asked, what do you do those moments, those confusing moments? And he said, I just kneel down and pray the Our Father prayers, very sincerely asking God to show me the way. And in fact, I found each time when I prayed the clear way to walk. And there are so many, I can go on and say, that they praised this powerful prayer, Our Father. And my dear brothers and sisters, we also 
say a number of times this prayer, our Father in our life too, but do we realize the power that is contained in us? If you really reflect deeply on this prayer, Jesus structured this prayer in two forms. The first form, the beginning stages, it speaks about thanking God, praising God, asking God to establish his kingdom on earth in and through us. And the second form of prayer contains the prayer of petitions, praying for our own needs. So what we need to remember when we pray, whatever may be the prayer of ours, first there should be God in our prayer and thanking him for all the gifts and graces of whatever we are going to receive or whatever we have received. And then we need to keep the prayer of petitions. But unfortunately, knowingly or unknowingly, what we most of the time pray is the prayer of petitions and not prayer of thanksgiving. And therefore, as we reflect on this powerful prayer, let us ask ourselves, do I really say very deeply understanding each word that is given by God's Son in this prayer? Or do my prayer has only prayer of petitions or prayer of thanksgivings or both? Let us continue to reflect at the same time, make use of this prayer for our spiritual welfare. Please stand. Let us pray for our special needs and those of the whole church. For Pope Francis and all who minister to God's people, may they be moved by compassion and love for those they serve. We pray to the Lord. For our political leaders and candidates for public office, may they act according to ethical and moral principles in their conduct of office and their campaigns for election. We pray to the Lord. For ourselves, may we see how we must change our lives to embody more fully God's love for all, we pray to the Lord. For all who are ill or suffering distress, may their faith strengthen them and their faith in Christ bring them to joy, we pray to the Lord. For all people to respect and honor human life from conception to natural death, we pray to the Lord. That we remember those who have asked for our prayers and for all the intentions we hold within our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially the victims of the coronavirus, may they be gathered with Mary and all the saints into the kingdom of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. There is also an especially way pray for reason. Lord, we lift up in our prayer reason your son who has come here with great interest to receive your precious body and blood. May the reception of this Holy Communion strengthen his faith and deepen his relationship with you, Lord. Spiritually nourish him each day with your presence and guidance. Bless his family members, parents, brothers and sisters and all our who are near to his heart, that they may be also safe and sound in your hand. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host. By the power of God, cast into hell Satan in all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, 
For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. It will be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we to extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, Holy Lord. God of host, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the found of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith and profess of resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity 
together with Francis our Pope, Michael Olson our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Ben Black, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that Ben Black, who was united with your son in death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Michael, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's coming, informed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give up this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace with you. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Lord, share us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy. But only say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us eternal life. Let us now together say the act of contrition and followed by the prayer of spiritual communion. O oh my God, I am heartily sorry for having offended you, and I detest all my sins because they have offended you, my God, who are all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve, with the help of your grace, to sin no more and to avoid the near occasions of sin. Amen. Prayer of Spiritual Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. 
Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Please come forward for communion in a single file while maintaining social distancing. Thank you. We remember how you loved us to your death, and still we celebrate, for you are with us here, and we believe that we will see you when you come in your glory, Lord. We remember, we celebrate, we believe. Here a million wounded souls are yearning just to touch you and be healed. Gather all your people and hold them to your heart. We remember how you loved us to your death. And still we celebrate, for you are with us here. And we believe that we will see you when you come in your glory, Lord. We remember, we celebrate, we believe. Now we recreate your love. We bring the bread and wine to share a meal. Sign of grace and mercy, the presence of the Lord. We remember how you loved us to your death. And still we celebrate, for you are with us here. And we believe that we will see you when you come in your glory, Lord. We remember, we celebrate, we believe. We remember how you loved us to your death. And still we celebrate, for you are with us here. And we believe that we will see you when you come. In your glory, Lord, we remember, we celebrate.
Well, Rahisat, can you please stand? Yeah, you, you can just come forward. We cannot see whether you're standing or sitting. Good. Look at the people. They wanted to see you. Good. Rahisat, are you happy now? You received Jesus. You should be very joyful now, okay? And, and at the same time, you need to pray more to Jesus because he loves you. Thank you, dear parents, for training him and bringing him. Continue to be an inspirational role model on behalf of the entire parish and all those who are gathered here. I wish hearty congratulations and prayers and wishes. Thank you. Please stand. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadow the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Well, we have a novena the seventh day. You can be seated, please. Dear brothers and sisters, we are on the seventh day at the Novena to St. Joseph. The theme for today's Novena is Patron of workers, St. Joseph. And as we are continue to pray for our fathers who have done a lot of great hard work in our family and who have sacrificed so many things for us, especially remember all our fathers and pray for them, interesting, interesting, him, interesting them to the care and the intercession of St. Joseph. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Saint Joseph, you devoted your time at Nazareth to the work of a carpenter. It was the will of God that you and your foster son should spend your days together in manual labor. What a beautiful example you set for the working classes. It was especially for the poor who composed the greater part of mankind that Jesus came upon earth. For in the synagogue of Nazareth, he read the words of Isaiah and referred them to himself. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. It was God's will that you should be occupied with work common to poor people, that in this way of Jesus himself might ennoble it by inheriting it from you his foster father, and by freely embracing it. Thus our Lord teaches us that for, for the humble class of workmen, he has in store his richest grace, provided they live content in the place God's providence has assigned them, and remain poor in spirit, for he said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for thus is the kingdom of heaven. The kind of work to which you devoted your entire time in workshop of Nazareth offered you many occasions of practicing humility. You are privileged to see each day the example of humility which Jesus practiced, a virtue most pleasing to him. He chose for his earthly surroundings, not the courts of princes, nor the halls of the learned, but a little workshop of Nazareth. Here you shared for many years the humble and hidden toiling of God man. What a touching example for the worker of today. While your hands were occupied with manual work, your, minds, your mind was turned to God in prayer. From the divine master you worked along with you. From the divine master who worked along with you, 
you learn to work in the presence of God in the spirit of prayer. For as he worked, he adored his Father and recommended the welfare of the whole world to him. Jesus also instructed you in the wonderful truths of grace and virtue, for you were in close contact with him who said, to, who said of himself, I am the way and the truth and the life. As you were working at your trade, you were reminded of the greatness and majesty of God, who as the most wise architect formed this vast universe with wonderful skill and limitless power. The light of divine faith that filled your mind did not grow dim when you saw Jesus working as a carpenter. You firmly believed that the saintly youth working beside you was truly God's own son. Let us pray. Saint Joseph, I thank God for your privilege of being able to work side by side with, a, with Jesus in the carpenter shop of Nazareth. As a token of your own gratitude to God, obtain for me the grace to respect the dignity of labor and ever to be content with a position in life, however lowly, in which it may please divine providence to place me. Teach me to work for God and with God in the spirit of humility and prayer, as you did, so that I may offer my toil in union with the sacrifice of Jesus in the Mass as a reparation for my sins and gain rich merit from, for heaven. Saint Joseph, I, your unworthy child, greet you. You are the faithful protector and intercessor of all who love and venerate you. You know that I have a special confidence in you and that after Jesus and Mary, I place all my hope of salvation in you for you are specially powerful with God and will never abandon your faithful servants. Therefore, I humbly invoke you and commend myself with all who are dear to me and all that belong to me to your intercession. I beg of you by your love for Jesus and Mary not to abandon me during life and to assist me at the hour of my death. Gracious, glorious Saint Joseph, spouse of the Immaculate Virgin, obtain for me a pure, humble, charitable mind and perfect resignation to the divine will. Be my guide, my father, and my model through life that I may merit to die as you did in the arms of Jesus and Mary. Loving Saint Joseph, faithful follower of Jesus Christ, I raise my heart to you to implore your powerful intercession in obtaining from the divine heart of Jesus all the graces necessary for my spiritual and temporal welfare, particularly the grace of a happy death and the special grace I now implore. Let us place our special request in the heart of our silence, especially acknowledging all the hard works that our fathers have done in our family to keep us all happy and smiling. Guardian of the Word incarnate, I feel confident that your prayers on my behalf will be graciously heard before the throne of God. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Memorare. Remember, most pure spouse of Mary, ever virgin, my loving protector, Saint Joseph, that no one ever had recourse to your protection or asked for your aid without obtaining relief. Confiding, therefore, in your goodness, I come before you and humbly implore you Despise not my petitions, foster father of the Redeemer, but graciously receive them. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Honor the cities in heaven. Give up this day our daily bread. 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Saint Joseph, pray for us. May Almighty God, through the intercession of Saint Joseph, bless all of us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining for, in this Holy Eucharist and for, to this Novena. As we have already completed seven days and we have a few more days, let us continue to pray for our Father, fathers, whether they are with us or they have gone to the eternal rest, let us gratefully acknowledge all the hard work that they have done in our family. Thank you and you all have a wonderful day. Please remain in your seats until the usher escorts you out. We do have a funeral at 10 o'clock, so um, we ask that you please leave the sanctuary. Please stand. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. 